Films TV sponsoreres af Company Pictures. There's a dude dressed like a superhero out there fighting a bunch of guys. It's awesome! Leave him alone! Bring it on! You're crazy, kid. Who are you? I'm kick ass. Det fremmer Mills talt med tegneseriefilmatiseringer nu til dags. Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, ja alle de største helte er for længst blevet skildret på det hvide lærred. Men siden når tusindskiftet har Hollywood også været mægtig glad for at filmatisere nogle af de lidt mere obskure tegneserieudgivelser. Det er der også kommet rigtig mange glimrende film ud af. Det er blandt History of Violence, Wanted, Watchmen og nu også Kick Ass. Kick Ass fortæller historien om den unge high school elev Dave Lesevski. Umiddelbart er han en helt almindelig teenager. Han kan hverken flyve eller se gennem vægge, men han har til gengæld en masse gå på mod og en enorm forkærlighed for tegneserier. Og Dave han kan slet ikke forstå, hvorfor der ikke findes nogen i den virkelige verden, som har prøvet at smække et kulørt kostyme på og bekæmpet de kriminelle. Så han køber sit eget diamond suit, han smækker det på og whoopty, så er han forvandlet til kick -ass. Men til sin store overraskelse finder Dave hurtigt ud af, at han ikke er den eneste maskerede hævner på Manhattan. Oh, check this, you're gonna love this. The Mist. Hey, that's right, we're superheroes. We love us. Vores anmelder Morten Weilgaard Just, også kendt som Nihilisten, har anmeldt filmen på hjemmesiden. Morten kalder filmen for et uhøjtidligt røvspark, og betegner den som en filmisk buffet, der har meget godt til en solidt bred smag, men som samlet måltid virker mere paradoxal end helt støbt. Et strammere fokus på den ironisk selvbevidste humor havde gjort filmen uomgængelig i Tarantino-klassen. Til sidst fastslår Morten, at den forudsigelige teenage romance og omsorgsvigtende alvor siden gør, at den desværre ikke sparker helt så meget røv som filmens potentiale, men dog alligevel væsentligt mere end Dave gør som superhelt. Fire stjerner får filmen fra Morten, og du kan som sagt læse hele anmeldelsen inde på hjemmesiden. Inde på hjemmesiden kan du også læse anmeldelser af ugens to andre nye premierefilm. Der er den romanske actionkomedie Date Night, og så også den kontroversielle I Love You Philip Morris, hvor E. Jim Carrey og Ewan McGregor spiller homoseksuelle elskere. I forbindelse med biografpremieren på Kickass har vi fået en masse interviews med filmens skuespiller, instruktør og tegneserieforfatteren Mark Miller. But I think he's a superhero that people can identify with, because as much as Peter Parker is a kind of everyman, he is also still going out with Kirsten Dunst, and he is still climbing walls and swinging about on webs and fighting the Green Goblin. This is a wee guy in the real world, coming up against some real life bad stuff. I'd written the first three issues and they hadn't even been drawn yet, and uh, I fired him down to Matthew, because he and I were talking about a couple of projects, and he liked the sound of this, and I just emailed him down the scripts, and he phoned me up and he says, I love this, we should do this next. And I was like, I haven't finished writing it yet. He says, well, just write as fast as you can. And he started on the screenplay, uh, you know, just behind me. And it was kind of weird, you know, because then I moved on to issue four and he was really into that. And then he caught up with issue four and then he moved beyond where I was. For me, it was the perfect way of deconstructing and repositioning and pushing forward the superhero genre. What I felt was Hollywood had clung on to um, what they thought the genre it was all about, which they were the way they were doing it was right for the 90s, but now it was time to move on. Everything that I felt would be fresh and different scared them. And understandably, you know, the idea of an 11 year old assassin with a filthy mouth, you know, they were like, no way would we ever, ever let that happen. Let's see what you can do now. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Every time she come on set for the first to meet a new actor, the actors would be like, "Okay, you're right. Are you ready?" And then you hear action, and suddenly the actors are like, "Oh my God, this girl is blowing me off the screen right now, and I'm going to stop 
treating her like a baby because then she made every actor raise their game. She was, she's a natural. She has a maturity about her which is ridiculous, but but she still has retained an innocence and she's she's still an innocent girl. But with when she but when, her acting technique is um, as good as anyone. And I've worked with some of the best actors in the world now. She's as good as any of them. You know, some directors will go, "Oh, you're a child, mimic me." Which, I mean, it's great because Matthew, he lets me make choices that no other director has let me make. Because he says, try it however you want to do it. Try it that way. And we converse about what we want to do. And I tell him how, I'm gonna, how I really want to play the role and what she's thinking in this scene and what she's, you know, what I'm going to say and how it's going to be played. And he, he's always really, really very behind me. He's very hands-on. He's an amazing director. After he, Matthew told me he wanted me, um, I started just training on my own at home. You know, push-ups, pull-ups, stuff like that. And then I got into the real stuff, and I was like, this is much harder than I thought. I'm using muscles I've never used before in my back. So I'm like swinging, and today I'm like all sore, so I'm like, oh, ow. My training was, Aaron, make sure you don't go to the gym. Oh, why is that? Because you've got to be skinny. Okay. <laughs> I thought that why the hell are they sending me in such like an insane action movie? Because I've you know I'm like this skinny kid who, who couldn't fight someone for the life of me, and I've like done a bunch of comedies and stuff. But the fact that they actually let me audition for this role, I was really honored. And uh, I went in, I actually auditioned for Kick Ass, and Matthew said in the audition, he's like, "You have too much spunk and like too much like sass for Kick Ass." And then like right in the audition, he told me that he wanted me for Chris, which was really awesome. It's different than all the other movies I've done because. The other comedies are very loose, and there's loads of improv you can do. But the thing is, with an action movie, there's not much improv you can do because the scenes are so tight, and they lead to another scene that you can't really riff away. But when there are spots, I definitely try to get my, my lines in. Oh my God. I like to do movies that I would want to see in the theater, and I would definitely want to see Kick-Ass in theaters. Matthew's very enthusiastic. He loves movies, and he loves music, and he's a, a truly artistic individual, and... and uh, you know it right away when you meet it, you know, that creative energy. You, you can see it very clearly, and he just, it just comes out of him. He's very interested in doing original artistic work, and he likes similar artists that I like. You know, he likes Keith Haring and uh, Andy Warhol. And, and so I got this feeling like we were going to do some sort of pop art uh movie. In the old days it was Greek myths, you know, or Arthurian myths, and then now it's Batman and it's Superman and Iron Man, Spider-Man, all the comics are what empower people. People, I know people who um, are paramedics who are in the ambulance with a Superman t-shirt on underneath their uniform. I mean, these people exist. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, bind them. Blu-ray-formatet har efterhånden nogle år på banen, men der er stadigvæk mange af filmhistoriens mest elskede titler, der endnu ikke er udkommet i High Definition. Star Wars sagen, Indiana Jones filmen, Alien filmene. Men nu er en af markets mest eftertragtede titler om sider udkommet på Blu-ray, Peter Jacksons Ringenes Herre trilogi. In the lands of Middle Earth, legend tells of the Dark Lord Sauron and the ring that would give him the power to enslave the world. Ja, hvad er der egentlig tilbage at sige om de her tre moderne klassikere som ikke allerede er blevet sagt? De har allerede skålet af skille milliarder dollars ind på verdensplan, og så har de også fået talløse priser, der er blandt til sammen 17 Oscars. Og med god grund. Der findes efterhånden virkelig mange velproducerede fantasyfilm på markedet. Men en af de ting, der virkelig gør, at Ringens Herre skiller sig ud, er, at Peter Jackson placerer drama og karaktererne i forgrunden, hvorimod de mere magiske elementer bliver placeret i baggrunden. Ringens Herre er ikke så meget en historie om talende træer, troldmænd og aggressive orker, som det er en historie om tro, om kærlighed, om det med at finde sin egen identitet og vejen hjem. Der er masser af ting at tage og føle på og relatere sig til, og der bliver altså ikke bare kælet for sanserne, men også for sjælen undervejs.
Desværre er denne nye Blu-ray-udgivelse en skuffelse på mange leder og kanter. For det første indeholder boksen kun biografudgaverne af filmene, og altså ikke de forlængede forbedrede versioner, der udkom på DVD. De skulle angiveligt udkomme på Blu-ray i 2011 i forbindelse med biografpremieren på Hobbiten, men der er nok mange fans, der ikke kan vente så længe, så om to år bliver de allerede nødt til at købe trilogien endnu en gang. Derudover medfølger absolut intet nyt ekstra materiale. Vi har set det alt sammen før, enten på tv eller de gamle DVD-udgivelser, og desværre er alle dokumentarerne ganske overfladiske. Værst af alt så imponerer filmene ikke sønderligt i high definition. Jo vist alle tre lydspor er helt igen eminente, og det er svært at vende tilbage til DVD'erne, efter man har hørt balrocken brøle i HD. Men i lange passager ser den første film ikke mærkbart bedre ud, end den gør på DVD. Billedet er underligt uskarpt og sløret, og farverne er meget matte og kedelige. Heldigvis ser de to andre film dog meget bedre ud, uden dog at se lige så godt ud som markedets bedste skiver. Hvis du ikke er vildt utålmodig, så vent et par år med at købe den, men hvis du er fan, kan jeg godt forstå, at du gerne vil eje den. De ser trods alt en smule bedre ud, end de gør på DVD. Der kommer snart en mere dybdeborende anmeldelse af både filmene og udgivelsen på hjemmesiden. Og du kan i øvrigt gå ind på siden og være med i en konkurrence, hvor du kan vinde boksen. Det var alt, hvad vi havde i denne omgang på Films TV. Husk, at det er i den her uge, at filmfestivalen Copenhagen Pix begynder i København. Alskens film fra diverse lande og fra alle mulige forskellige genrer bliver præsenteret i biograferne i hovedstadsområdet. Du kan se hele programmet på festivalens hjemmeside. Det er på www.cphpix.dk. Vi kigger nærmere på nogle af festivalens film i næste udsendelse, hvor vi også kigger på Blu-ray-udgivelsen af Toy Story-filmene og taler med folkene bag det prisbelønnede dansk-svenske komediedrama Original. På gensyn.